Hi, come please. Am I audible comfortably? Perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Ekam Preet. Hi, Gaurav. Okay, I think I can begin once we have an audience of more than twenty, which is super soon. We've already reached sixteen already. Okay, so a very good afternoon to all of you who are at Mithi Wood Film Festival's live today. I'm very glad you could take out some time to be here. And what I would like to say is for whoever is new here, Mithi Wood is an international intercollegiate film festival which acts as a bridge between students who are interested in becoming filmmakers and industry professionals. Mithi Wood consists of a lot of events like quizzes, trivias, contests, workshops with renowned professionals and live talk shows with celebrities. It began in 2019 and this year we have our very favorite Mr. Gaurav Lodha as our chairperson. Thank you Gaurav and team for bringing us this amazing opportunity amidst a sad lockdown. It is our one stop destination for all things glam. Today we have with us the multifaceted beautiful diva who has our hearts and is popularly known for her recent role in Good News. Yes, I'm talking about Miss Anjana Sukhani. She has been an actress in multiple films shot in Punjabi, Telugu, Hindi, Marathi and Kannada since 2005. She has won awards like best supporting actress for films in Kannada. You may also know her for her appearance in Fear Factor or family favorites like Golmal Returns, Jashn or Shandar. I feel privileged to have the opportunity to share this virtual stage with her and I would definitely like to invite her to our live right now. So I hope you guys are ready to have an amazing session with her. Okay, I have received her request to join. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for How such a lovely and a sweet introduction. I'm glad you could walk, you could watch it. I couldn't see it, so I joined. <laughs> I did, I did. The problems of the technical world. I agree, so true. <laughs> Again, ma'am, I feel very privileged to have this opportunity to share the stage with you. Thank and you. to all the audience watching here, it wouldn't have been possible without Mitty Wood Film Festival. Thank you so. So, Angela, ma'am. Let's jump into yes. our uh, session of multiple questions and getting to know you. Oh my God, lots Before of questions you... indeed, actually. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'll just take you through what kind of questions we have for you. We'll have a few personal questions about, you know, uh, where you're from, what you've done. Right. A few questions about our favorite movie uh, in which we watched you, which is Good News, and a few questions about the movie industry, as well as a few subjective questions. through which we can understand an insight of an actor yes yeah yes so first of all let me ask you a very cheesy question how are you so gorgeous like i have been stalking <laughs> you on instagram <laughs> since last night and it has been amazing to see how gracefully you carry yourself so tell us your secrets about being so 
young and hearty at all times young yeah, i hope i remain that young and hearty always but no i think um, i think this comes with experience this comes with interactions with uh, you know with colleagues with friends with people generally with fans and i think you kind of develop a sense of uh, grace and dignity while maintaining you know your your own personality but as well as uh, being a a nice person to somebody who's like complimenting you or saying sweet things to you so i think you learn to kind of imbibe both the words there is a certain um, i won't say pride but in a way you know because i can't find a better word i feel maybe a little bit of pride but a little bit of uh, you know sense of achievement in life and also uh, humility put together so i think it's it's like a combination of both and i think you kind of then learn to deal with things uh, like that wow i haven't heard such an insightful answer about such a cheesy question and i'm just <laughs> more deep. excited about getting to know uh, all about you so again a few cliche questions like what do you like the most about being an actress everything i mean i wouldn't trade this uh, for anything under the sun not even like loads of money <laughs> maybe a lot of travel wow. yes <laughs> but uh, okay. definitely yeah i mean yeah, where else would in the world there will be a profession where every day or every month or every year so many times in a year you get to perform somebody who you're not you know you get to be somebody who you're not there's a sense of freedom uh, because i think we all of us have these very uh, deep uh, emotions which don't come out always so easily and i think through these characters at least as an artist uh, you know we get those opportunities to portray it so i think i wouldn't trade this for nothing on this earth absolutely that's great what has your experience been like on the red carpet oh i enjoy it though i think i'm a bit lame um, i don't have a great mm-hmm. fashion sense honestly i really have to rely on people who dress me up and uh, okay. break their heads because they are like you know you're so jhala i mean come on have some some kind of sense of you know being on the red. so i'm learning uh, i think i'm definitely better than before but uh, i guess i'm i'm still but i do enjoy it of course i mean it's a it's a great uh, way to feel nice because you know when you when you when you uh, look good you also feel good even though i think it's a bit of a vanity issue but uh, but yeah why not i mean enjoy while it lasts Wow, that's great. I mean, for similar reasons, this year Mitty Wood has brought in a theme called digital red carpet, uh-huh. and it's there with all the hustle bustle, glam, and everything that we can get in virtually. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad you're one of the first few stars on our red carpet. I'm and glad. And we hope to learn a lot from you. Absolutely, whatever I can. So uh I'll ask you a few favorites like what is your go to movie genre Oh my god I am obsessed with crime so <laughs> that okay. probably would be my first maybe and then there will be an extreme end of the rainbow which would be romance so I think I I yo yo between you know crime and thrillers and romance so yeah like both actually Okay so what kind of music do you listen to I pretty much listen to everything. I honestly really enjoy Hindi music. Not that I'm saying I don't love English. You know, I think music is something which is, which changes with every emotion that you feel in the day. So it, you know, that's the reason why we have this gamut of uh, sad songs, love songs, romantic songs, yeah. thrilling songs, funny songs. Uh, and I like I said that you know, with every mood, uh, a different song comes by. And I don't think so. Then language really becomes a barrier. Uh, I think when you enjoy the sound of it, I think that's all that really matters. So uh, I pretty much enjoy all kind of music, even gazal. Oh, that's great! Yeah, I saw your post about uh, Gulzar Ji, and I was very surprised to know that you have such a wide spectrum of likings through your music and poetry. Oh yes, absolutely. So, what kind of hobbies do you have? if you leave me i think i will only travel like i will just travel and travel and travel for a very long time i thought uh, i really liked food a lot which i do and i thought i really enjoy cooking so i do once in a while but i think something that has always stayed and i've really really enjoyed i think it has to be just i'm a wanderer so i just want to travel all the time read good books 
and travel and music <laughs> wow that is a very refined hobby i mean traveling <laughs> is going to uh, you know open up your mental horizons and get you you know in touch with the nature and a lot of people so i'm sure that it helps you in your journey as an actor as well absolutely yes absolutely yes good to know so again if you weren't an actor what would you want to be if i wasn't uh i think i would have been an entrepreneur because uh, i've done my okay. master and i always wanted to start my own uh you know garment export business and if that also probably when i worked i think i would have studied and you know probably i mean i probably i think i would have loved to study uh, you know give uh, take some ias exams and be this super cool intelligent uh, diplomat or a bureaucrat or somebody god knows <laughs> wow that's great i mean a balance of both business as well as uh, you know service to country amazing idea what i've been yeah i think i mean i think if not an actor if god would not have like picked me and put me here then i wouldn't have any other choice but to find something else to do <laughs> right so something that we always want to know did you does if like have you gone through any formal training for acting i have just attended a few workshops uh, you know theater okay. workshops but i've never really been formally trained per se uh, i think it's very important to get trained but at the end of the day it is the you have to go right into your own core to be able to perform you know you have to right. go to the right depths of your emotion to be able to bring any kind of emotion you want to portray uh, i think what the training helps probably is to uh, lead you to the path of going deep but i don't think so anybody mm-hmm. can really teach you how to act i mean i i i okay. personally don't think so i could be wrong but i feel uh, they can teach you how to act they can just guide you to to a way where you are able to you know emote out so yeah right or maybe the technicalities of being in technicalities front of the yes, of course like you know camera angles and lights and you know getting your facing right getting your language right your diction right all that yes of course matters a lot but acting per se i don't think so anybody can really teach you okay so have you performed uh, any theater plays or have you been a theater artist before i would have loved to but now i feel you know uh, theater uh, it it demands a lot of your time and it would have right. been when i started i would have done that but now i've reached a point where maybe maybe i would at some day and i always say never say never but maybe some day right. i would i would give theater some thought but for now i don't really feel have that kind of time to commit to you know to to that side of the craft in the theater okay So what has been your uh, greatest accomplishment so far? Uh I think coming from a non-filmy background completely to even reaching at this point I would say that it's a great accomplishment on its own you know uh I have to give of course credit to my parents for that because uh they've always stood by my decision to be that I wanted to be an actor and they let me be but uh I think yeah I think just being an actor I think is the greatest accomplishment other than that on a more philosophical side I would say um, a kind of human being is uh, my personal uh, accomplishment as a as a human being yes That's great that's definitely something that we all want to hear from people who are on screen uh, kindness because the kindness is something that is relatively la- rare these days unfortunately so and very glad. and very much needed rare and very very much yeah. needed at this point absolutely absolutely true especially in times like this right now like when we all of us are stuck at home i think kindness is the only thing that has gotten all of us through you know as oh, a community in absolutely in whatever smallest biggest minutest way you can you should did somebody Good just know anushka <laughs> <laughs> they need to get i think that was probably their auto correct <laughs> anyways yeah they have been raining in comments ma'am you're beautiful we are so excited you are just so sweet and nice seriously you know i truly truly appreciate and so thankful for all of you to be here today okay we go back to our question yes yeah So what do you like the most about good news as a movie 
I think, of course, what you see is, uh, you know, you see it in totality as a film. But the amount of fun that actually went behind uh, making the film, I think that was the most exciting part for me. And uh, I truly enjoyed my time because most of my scenes were with Akshay and Karina. And uh, I truly, truly enjoyed my time with them. They've been really warm and nice and really, really sweet people. So I had personally a great time uh, shooting with both of them. The fun thing. That's great. So, did you go through any challenges, you know, trying to bring a character to life in Good News? You know, not really. You know, the good thing about uh, being an actor is that when the director mostly comes with a script, they already know what each character really looks like, uh, what are their attributes, uh, how are they going to look, how are they going to talk. And I think my character didn't really need, uh, you know, so much of research because... She had to be very casual and caring. I think that was the kind of brief which uh, I got that she's a caring sister. And obviously she wants her brother to have a child and not miss out because she's just had a child. And she doesn't want her brother to miss out the joys of, you know, being a father. And that's the reason why she's probably pushy about telling him again and again that, listen, go get an IVF done or go meet this doctor or go do this. So um, okay. I think that was, that was the only brief given to me that you have to be very caring you're an intelligent girl because you're a lawyer, but you also, because there's also this homely side to you, which is, you know, your your brother-sister relationship with him. So I think there was the only kind of brief, and I think that probably comes naturally to all of us, right? We all mostly have siblings and either an elder brother or a sister, and I think that organically just flows through you. So there was not really a prep per se required for it. Okay. So now that you tell me that it has, it was something that flowed for you, what what was the casting process like? Casting was actually, uh, it literally actually, you know, I'm, I have to thank the casting uh, person, Shruti Majan. So she called me to audition for it. And uh, she told me that this is the film. And, uh, you know, there's a new director directing it. And there's Akshay and it's her sister, his sister's part. So I was first, I was like, sister, I don't know. But I said, okay, you know, chalo, let's audition. I haven't really been, you know, working too much off late. So I said, chalo, let's go see it. I auditioned, I think the day I auditioned, I kind of knew this was going to work for me because this was completely in my zone. And not just okay. as an actor, I think even as a personality of how her personality was in the film, I think I kind of resonate very easily with it. So, uh, and then she called me once again to audition after that day. And I was like, why are they auditioning like so many times? What's going on? <laughs> Yeah. And I think three days after that, she told me, listen, go meet the director. I mean, uh, you know, he wants to meet you at Dharma. So just, you know, go and, you know, say hi to him and go see him. He just wants to see you. I was like, cool. And actually, literally, it was done literally like that. So it was not like a rigorous process or, oh, my God, I was, uh, you know, it was like a long wait of getting to it. I think it just literally happened. I think in a week's time, it just literally happened. So some things just are blessings, I would say. Yeah, that sounds really nice. So, uh, what's your favorite character in the movie apart from yours? Um, it has to be Bebo's. Uh, okay. You know, a certain amount of grace and dignity and strength and will. And, uh, you know, to a person who takes a stand for herself um, and and also would go to any lengths to, to be a good mother to her child. And I think there's so many beautiful qualities about that that particular character. Not that others were uh, not good, but I personally, I think, uh, loved Bebo's character completely in that film. Yeah, I mean, the film explores so many different aspects which are not very openly spoken about, True. unfortunately, and opens up an avenue of completely different things for parents who are looking to have a child and is Absolutely. Know, and having some trouble. Absolutely. So, that's an amazing choice, I think. So coming to the um, movie industry, or maybe, hmm. you know, one more question about good news, I think. What part of the movie was a head turner for you? So how did you come to select the script? Like what part in the script made you feel like, Acha, okay. This I is- think the whole idea hmm. of it being the first film which, which, you know, talks about IVF, but it is not saying things. It's a serious matter, you know, to have a child right. through IVF. But to say it in a very easy um, not comic is probably the wrong word, but to say it in a very easy, flowy manner, I think that always works. You know, when you take serious issues and you deal with them 
on a more lighter note uh people will connect to it very easily and i think that's what happened with uh, good news as well i i think the the prime reason of course was you know it's a great production house it had a great cast and the story was you know about ivf which has never really been spoken about which is also again a very important issue of our times where you know women are dealing pregnancies or they are not able to conceive for whatever x y z reasons and uh, this is their way to have a chance to motherhood and i think why not talk about something like that and i think i think that that was a great idea and i mean i didn't want to be left out not being part of a film like that for sure right so what have you enjoyed more bollywood tollywood <laughs> or the marathi industry you know it's very uh, as an actor i think it's a it's a question which is like which is like a dragger in your heart because you love everything about cinema it's just that you know my language is changing from region to region but uh, right. my emotions are not changing they might waver in in graphs you know in the template but but it remains it ideally remains the same i mean love is equally love in bollywood how they will portray or they'll portray it in telugu or they'll portray it in marathi that's love right that emotion doesn't changes i'm just using a different language to say it so uh, i think it's very difficult to pick a industry i have enjoyed and learned so much from from being part of each industry you know we've had different experiences of course and but yeah i mean it's very difficult to really choose and say i enjoyed here i think i just enjoy being on the set just leave me that's all and i'm happiest Okay, so an absolute actor at heart, you know, like you can't get enough of any industry. Thank God! You want. Thank God for that, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what has this industry, the movie industry in general, given yeah. to you that any other career wouldn't have been able to give to you? I think the amount of love, the adulation, the acknowledgement, the the chance to be. someone else to experience some another character's emotions every time you know you are on a set there are a lot of tangible and intangible benefits i think to being an artist like i said you know the, the acknowledgement and appreciation obviously makes up for your ego <laughs> but the internally how it changes you you know uh, every time you step on the set and you're playing somebody else and um, every every virtue of that character in some way or the other changes you internally which i think you will only understand when when you are an artist an artist i don't mean only an actor i i mean even a music a musician or a painter you know it can come from anywhere but uh, i think the beauty of uh, just being an artist in itself i think ha- has been the greatest gift that uh, they've given me a chance to be part of so many films of different languages and uh, i can't be grateful enough for all of that wow that was definitely quite humbling to hear and i hope that all the you know aspiring actresses and actors who are sitting for the live today uh, learn a lot from your experience and um, so something that has come up of late what do you think about ott platforms do you think they are going to take over the film industry soon uh see you know again i am no uh, like a say on how this eventually because when when actually web started coming in nobody really knew how it is going to pan out but suddenly right. the lockdown made us realize that oh my god it is so important that entertainment is so important per se now whether you're getting yeah. that entertainment on a smaller screen in your tv or you're getting it on on a you know 70 mm screen it doesn't really matter as long as the content is great uh, i think nobody really realized the value of web when it really happened but i think like i said lockdown has changed drastically uh i am absolutely open uh to web i rather i'm doing something right now and uh i think that kind of censorship of what you want to or don't want to do will always be yours you know that choice will always be yours where you draw your line of whether you can cross that line and be comfortable with it or you live or you live and perform under the line and you're comfortable with that too uh ott is going to be great i think because not just because um uh, you know you are sitting at home and watching it but also in term, terms of the reach of cinema or the reach of content or the reach of stories that people want to tell and i think uh, like today somebody you know there are films which probably don't 
not all films get overseas release unless they are like really big films with very big star cast so the films which never got a release are now have now the potential of reaching audiences in different parts of the world and i think that is phenomenal actually today it has opened doors for artists like unbelievable today i could be you know called for an a korean film or a, you know or a, i don't know some any other language film you just never know how it's okay. going to work anymore so i think that's great in terms of movies i think the experience of cinema will always be this oh my god wow you know you look up to the screen and i i really yeah. hope that, day that doesn't change <laughs> at least i wouldn't want it to change but i guess times uh, you know tell different stories all the time so let's see how that goes all right uh, personally i don't think cinema is anywhere to go ott yes it has become a home favorite but once in a while you always want to watch your favorite movie oh yes the of course by all means movie. that experience you will never get it on your tv even if it is like a 18 inch tv you still want this the yeah. feel something else right so what do you think is coming up next for you a web series or a movie both actually so um okay. the film obviously we are we are waiting for the theatrical release whenever that it is possible and uh, mm-hmm. web i'm just in the midst of shooting it so i guess if both come simultaneously i'll be happy <laughs> looking forward to seeing you on as many screens as possible please yeah, thank you um, now so what is your general approach to director's vision like do you prefer improvising or are you very uh, you know focused on how the director wants it to go i think it's very important as an artist to bring something of you also on the table you know i mean i think it would be very uh, not insensitive but it probably would be not that nice if you don't do your personal homework and go on the set uh, right. yes like i said there are a lot of directors now they because the research is done so much that there's very little effort you probably have to put but at least that little effort you need to put so um, absolutely yeah i think it's very very important that uh, you have to bring something on the table otherwise why you there are like millions of uh, you know people who are beautiful and talented uh, you know who would get the chance to be there so you have to bring something on the table for sure and that you can only bring through the nuances that you create for your character or you know something something unique something different it's probably not possible all the time something you just need sometimes on screen you only just need somebody who's very casual and easy going as a person you know but some characters yeah. need to be defined some characters need that bit of a little more depth and i think that that one artist should work on for sure you know not leave it on to the director okay good to know <laughs> so uh, we'll get into a few subjective questions now sure. uh, these are personally my favorite this definitely gives us a lot of insight into uh, who you are as a person and how you want to uh, you know facilitate the community around you okay. what is your take on body positivity on body positivity positivity yeah i think one should accept people as they are but at the same time you know we live uh, we live in a world where or, where visual medium is very very important and unfortunately right. either we are conditioned or ingrained with this philosophy that uh, you know white is beautiful and black is sad or uh, thin is good and fat is not good i think personally if you take responsibility for yourself you will anyways would love to be fit not because you uh, want to fit into the society but for your own personal yeah. growth it's very important uh, at this at the same time i will still be a little um, superficial and say that i think it's also very important to look good not because that takes away from your intelligence but i think it's also because you personally feel so nice doing that so i think uh, a little bit of vanity of course is very important right i mean you can't just be this i am uh, i am this the uh, nerdy person but uh, you know i but i want to be part of that group so you know you have to make efforts when you want to do things in life it's not just going to happen like that yes nitin okay sorry that's my very dear friend <laughs> <laughs> okay so again uh i would say a word of advice that you would like to give to all the budding actors and actresses well, with us today. to begin with i don't think so i have the say in giving any advice to anybody uh, i'm still getting there myself 
but i what i have learned through these years is that um uh, and i say this example always and all the time i think this has become my pet uh dialogue per se to say i always say that stand and the bus will come you know stand there stand at that bus stop the bus will come it has to come there is no other there's no other way but don't leave and go the moment you leave the place there are you know 20 people behind you wanting to take the same spot that you were standing on so at least a certain period of your time if you are able to please give that that passion to your dream you know feed it and i remember my grandfather used to always tell us this story where whatever you feed it will grow so if you'll feed your fears about what if i may, don't make it what if i don't get an opportunity what if it this is not going to work for me then you're feeding that fear so i'm saying change that same feeding into into your um, you know into that positivity of it that listen i can make it of course be realistic about it uh, also you know uh, be prepared like when i came in honestly i wasn't prepared i wasn't a great dancer when i came in i wasn't trained in uh, action when i came in and now when you see you know these girls coming in they are so well trained in acting the acting to chalo theek hai but dancing and you know the extra uh, periphery of it i think it's very important to train yourself into everything when you step in that will the, that way i think the journey will probably become a little easy because you already so prepped and come inside i think that will right. be my little piece of advice <laughs> all right so uh, an audience favorite what have you learned in the lockdown to chill <laughs> to chill wow to chill i've learned to chill i feel you know it's silly to take too much on your head and you know feed your brain unnecessarily things which are not even happening you just need to ease out um enjoy life as it's coming be aware of you know your surroundings be aware of what is happening around you participate in whichever possible way you can uh also try and make people's life as easy as possible at least people around you if you are not able to go out of that periphery at least try to make it comfortable for people who are around you you know i'm saying say for example whether it's your house helps your drivers your watchmans whatever yeah. i'm saying maybe you can't do too much which i obviously understand it's not it's not everybody is a billionaire but in whatever comfortable way that you can make somebody else's life happy i think it is our responsibility as human beings first of all to do that and not just for human beings i think our first responsibility is towards beings who cannot talk which means i mean say i what i mean to say is animals pets cats oh, oh. everything around us nature if he's given us this i think it's an extreme responsibility to take care of them as well so i think this is all that i have kind of learned i knew it i learned it a little more <laughs> that's very heartwarming i think all of us need to continue learning these things even after the lockdown oh yes absolutely these are the learnings that you should take uh, lifelong with you you know and continue to act on them all right uh, a last question for you since we know your time is very valuable and we have taken up a lot of it already no nah, no nah, that's um, okay i have observed that you shared a lot of quotes on your stories and uh, what i want to know is that what is your mantra so i feel uh, you know life is all about getting up every day and fighting for your dreams and passion and I, and this i knew for a very long time maybe since school that you have to fight for what you want not even fight fight probably i feel is a negative word to even use in that context but you have to get up and feed your dreams every day and that i have learned from some really close people off late all the more because i think i had kind of gone a little laid back in life and uh, these okay. quotes kind of just help me for you know because i'm the one who's typing it so i am the first one to reading and putting it out so this is the energy that i'm right. feeding to myself and i feel right. like i said we owe it also to even out of maybe 500 people even if one person feels the change with those positive quotes then i think that's achieved right like the whole idea of putting it out and somebody like somebody texted me and told me uh he's pretty young he was my neighbor in one of the buildings and he said didi you know i look forward to reading these quotes because um it just makes my morning because they are very inspiring and uh, they really help me out through the day and you know it, i i felt really so nice because 
it's just one person changing their perspective can change so much in the world and i guess that's the job done <laughs> Absolutely I think as an actor if you don't use a social media platform to put out positive affirmations for yourself and others true your work is not done true absolutely so thank you so much for being thank here you. i'm just going to take a quick screenshot of both of us let me pull it out yes 1 2 3 all right Yay. thank you so much thank you I so much Charlie thank you I hope Mithi Wood Film Festival has the opportunity to have you with us offline as well so that I we can sure, have a I'm sure I'm sure I'll happen next year when we all will be able to gather in like a nice hall and we'll still be able to breathe without mask hopefully <laughs> but till then yes, mask up yes, <laughs> Here's to hoping for everything better for all of us collectively absolutely absolutely